In digital, it's always easier to track everything. The objective as a company owner, if you want to make profit, is to have a long time LTV. Acquiring leads is going to be two ways. One, organic. The other one is you're going to pay ads. If we think about a funnel, we need to make acquisition to find customers. The more you build value, the more valuable you become to the people. The more expensive you have and the more they're going to come to you, which means you become rarer. Hello guys, welcome again to speak and keep going about the scale talks. So today, still with Antoine, we will share about a little interesting subject that I really like with funnels against hourglass. Yeah, big topic, big strategic topic, as a matter of fact, when we talk about sales. And somehow we're going to go against what everybody is saying. When you look at marketing, digital marketing best practices, everyone is talking about funnels. You need to have a funnel, you need to have a funnel, you need to have a funnel, and then you need to have a funnel, and then still a funnel. Okay, but there is more to that. Of course, people think about, you know, that funnel is, uh, uh, in French we say entonnoir. I really like this word, but I don't know if in English they use it. But anyway, you see that, and it's going from a wide range where you have someone you will get in touch and then because of few action you get the lead and then few action that lead is warmed nurtured okay that lead gets hot and because he's hot he will be at some point buying what you have to say that's a basic that's something that is of course really important and we could speak about funnel a lot but is it enough that's the question and as you said uh, a little before we start the recording um this is really related to creating an asset with your company, so scaling what we speak about, and creating something else after only a buy, a sell, whatever we call it. And here you have the possibility with the hourglass to create, okay, the first funnel, you get to that point, but then because they got into your ecosystem, they got to know you, they got to know your service, you will okay, explore more and bring more to them, more value, more thing, so that they keep going, working with you, so that you can generate more income with a single person, and so that your business become even more profitable and maybe become profitable, because some business waiting at selling are not profitable. While if they would have think not only about a funnel, but hourglass, they would have something that is profitable in the end. The point is, I think that topic, to be honest, is a big hypocrisy. It's very hypocrite. When you think about it, all the marketers online, they say, I'm going to teach you how to do a funnel. And sell and make money. And sell, sell. and make money. And the reality is they teach you to do a funnel, which only is the basis, the beginning of everything. Because what they do, what they do is not a funnel, it's an hourglass. Because you are going to get on whoever, right? And I'm going to teach you how to do a funnel. So you're going to pay something, $99, $250, $900, whatever. You're going to pay for that. If they do their job properly, once you've paid, they're going to keep sending you emails and they're going to push you to buy something else. And if they do it smartly, you're not even going to realize it because as soon as you've clicked pay, a pop-up is going to show up on the screen and say, oh, by the way, I've got that promotion on that other training and it's just $59 instead of 250 but it's just now, do you want it? And just now, you're not in the funnel anymore. You're already in the hourglass. So it's something that they do, but they don't talk about it because otherwise it would be giving up the big secret, right? The big secret is the hourglass. Now, why is it relevant and how can you start measuring it based on what you're doing? The point about the funnel is you need to have a lot of people on top layer to have a chance to have one, two, three, four down the, the funnel or in the middle of the hourglass, right? So if you just take your Google Analytics stats and you look at how many people get on your website on a monthly basis, maybe that's a thousand, maybe that's a hundred, maybe that's 10,000, then the question is how many of them click? How many of them buy? So it's going to depend on a few things, right? What is your business model? If your business is to publish content, to have a lot of ads, 
then you can look at how many clicks you have and how many money you, how much money you've made out of those clicks, right? So that gives you a way to calculate what is the efficiency of that funnel. But then people click and then they go away. So you're not playing the hourglass game. If your model is that you're selling a course, that's the same. How many people get on your website? How many on that 10,000 are going to click on something to give you their email? Maybe that's 1%. And then on that 1%, you're going to send them emails. How many are going to actually buy? Maybe that's 10% of 1%. So by knowing what your conversion rate is, you can start saying, okay, how many people do I need to get into the funnel at the top layer so that I can get someone to pay for something? And then you can start optimizing. But that's the first part of it. And when you think of that, you said, okay, uh, have efficiency. And the fact is, in digital, it's always easier to track everything. If you are not in digital, but you want to do funnels, because in a way, uh, there is a way for you to get leads and to validate people to get to that by uh, situation, find a way to get those data. Uh, you said something, you said Google Analytics, even if you uh, are doing less and less digital, if you are disconnected to all of that, you have at least a website. So your website helps you to have those data. But so for some other business, it's way more accurate because it's just how much money they are spending, I don't know, in ads or in this acquisition stuff. And they have the exact situation and numbers inside their CRM. You don't even need to be to be online and you don't even need to be digital. If what you do is being a lawyer, okay, lawyers may be a wrong example because lawyers are not, depends where, but usually they're not allowed to do advertising. Exactly. In the UK, US, in UK certainly they can, which is why you have lots of ads on TV that say, hey, you could sue your neighbor, you know. <laughs> um, but in most jurisdictions, lawyers are a bad example. But you are a web designer and you go to events in the evening to try and give some business cards and find people you want to do websites for, right? You can start from here. It means you count how many business cards you have, right? So you're going to, to order 500 online. So you order 500 and in a month, you look at how many you have. Maybe you still have 300. So that means you gave 200 business cards to people. On those 200 business cards you gave, how many phone calls did you get? Percentage. How many emails did you get? Percentage. Maybe you got 10%. Okay. And then on those phone calls, on those WhatsApp messages, on those um, emails that you got with people, how many meetings did you get to try and pitch your website? Mm -hmm. Actual meetings, not Actual no meetings, shows. <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't include the no-shows. <laughs> but how many business cards did you give? How many exchanges did you get? How many meetings did you get and how many sales did you make in the end and that's a very simple process you don't need to be digitalized at all just exactly. business cards is enough provided that you count but you, you see in your count. funnel the efficiency in the end exactly it's just a question of counting and that's very uh, very efficient now that part we just mentioned is the typical funnel logic the question is why do we start saying you know the hourglass is uh, is more important the hourglass is definitely uh, important in terms of LTV. So we said you got to sell something, but most of the time... You have to translate LTV is... Ah, uh, <laughs> long-term value of a person, lifetime value, sorry. Um, so it's something that represents a person that will, okay, buy once, but the more he buy in the future of your services, of your product, of whatever, the more his LTV is high. And your objective as a company owner, if you want to make profit, is to have a long time LTV. The m bigger your LTV is, let's say, I don't know, I will say a number just like that, but uh, five, uh, then it's better than one. And because it's higher, then it means you have someone that is keeping buying and keeping contact with you. And then you can make more money with him. Let me illustrate. You sell t-shirts online. You have to get through the whole process of building that funnel and acquiring your leads, right? If you're interested in the topic of acquiring leads, look for the video we recorded on that, by the way. Acquiring leads is going to be two ways. One, organic, so you create posts and videos and you say, hey, look at my t-shirt, buy it. The link is below, right? 
The other one is you're going to pay ads mm -hmm. and people are going to click on the ad. They're going to get on your shop. They're going to like the T-shirt because there is a cute dog on it and they're going to buy it. Let's give uh, uh, also in that example, you keep going, uh, numbers. So let's say this acquisition ads cost 10, $10. And so the acquisition cost of that client for that T-shirt is going to be 10, right? Now, the T-shirt we're selling is worth $25 selling price. But let's say we, we're doing it with print-on-demand and the print-on-demand company is going to charge me 15 to print, ship, blah, blah, blah. If you're better at math than I am, <laughs> it means 15 in printing and shipping plus 10 in advertising and lead acquisition, client acquisition cost. So we're already at 25, which means we're screwed, right? Because the price Zero of percent. the T-shirt is 25. If we factor in the electricity, um, the insurance, the mobile phone and all that, you're actually losing money on that T-shirt. Exactly. Right? So if you look at that business model, just doing like that, you're like, okay, T-shirts isn't profitable. That's because we're thinking with the funnel logic. Exactly. But if we start thinking with the hourglass logic, then we say, all right, but we have to be smart because that client maybe is bringing zero maybe actually minus three because we have to pay the insurance and the mobile phone and the heating and the water, right? General costs. But if we do things the smart way and we start creating an email system that's going to send them on a regular basis new ads that are going to show them the new t-shirts that we have, then the acquisition cost on t-shirt number two, three, five, ten, fifty one is zero because it's automated emails. Yeah, and especially, um, let's give example in terms of product and services for people to understand. First, you have a t-shirt. Uh, let's say you have a t-shirt on, I don't know, I see uh, here what we have, cat, okay, we have a cat. So we sell a t-shirt with a cat on it. Okay, person that bought a t-shirt was fan of cat, it costs you 10, uh, you have 15 in cost for uh, 10 on ads to get that person, 15 in, a, in, um, in production to send and everything. And uh, you have that person that loves cats as a customer. As you said, we will send emails, we will do retargeting, but we will show to that person what they can buy in addition. Maybe it will be another t-shirt with cats, but another, it will be two cats on this one. Or maybe it will be, um, I don't know, um, a bracelet with a cat. Maybe it will be a toy for a cat. Maybe, you see, so in addition, you bring a different offers, you enlarge the offers, and then you give what the person wants. Because it's your customer, you know already what they want and you know exactly the market you are in. So find a way to bring them more value with a product, it can be with a service, on what they have already bought and what they will buy in the future. And the more you bring that to that person, and let's say you sell another t-shirt, it costs you 15 still, but it costs you zero in acquisition this time, you have tender profit. So if we try to put numbers on that, it means that with the funnel logic, the value is zero. With value is, is 25. Minus 10 for the, the acquisition, minus 15 for the production, zero, no need, no, no way to do anything. But if we find a way to say that client is going to buy three more t-shirts over the year for himself, plus five around Christmas, that's eight t-shirts, plus the one he just bought, right? So the lifetime value over one year is going to be 25 times eight, which is definitely worth putting 10 right now in acquisition cost because we know that 10 right now is going to bring 8 times 25. And that's just for one year because if we keep nurturing that relationship with the client, it could be the next years. Now, this is for a t-shirt, but it could be for um, services. If you are an accountant and you just charge your clients once a year, you're a dumbass. Excuse my French. <laughs> <laughs> but if you charge them something every month to say, I am going to have one call every month to look at your financial strategy and it's not going to take me a lot of time, but it's going to create a lot of value for you, then you have a way to do that hourglass logic that creates value for your client and keeps selling stuff. And I was going to give the example of membership or SaaS actually because... And that's another point. Yeah. That's another model. 
Exactly, because they do take for granted that it's not only a funnel. <laughs> it's an hourglass, otherwise their system will not exist because exactly. most of the time for membership or SaaS, um, they, whatever cost of acquisition is way higher than any uh, monthly payment. So they have to think about, okay, if I keep my customer for one year, then I will be profitable 20% of, of turnover I've made. Okay, if he stays two years, then it's fully profit for the second years. So that uh, notion of hourglass is already understood by some kind of business. Mm -hmm. But uh, the person that comes into business to directly sell and don't have any kind of membership or things like that, or, or ecosystem, let's say, uh, they do make the mistake. So I'll let you keep going on that one. No, I think that I think we've said most of it. But th the real point here is next time you hear someone who tells you about how to build a sales funnel, just start from the fact that this is only half of the story. Actually, it's less than half of the story because the hourglass is technically a lot bigger under the iceberg than on top of it. It's actually the iceberg picture is pretty good. The, the top of the iceberg is just a, a small part of it. If you think about it and you put that into a consulting perspective, for instance, if I say me looking for a client online is going to cost me a thousand dollars, right? But I can charge them five thousand a year, a month. And I'm going to do that on a recurring basis and charge their credit card every month for a year. And then I'm going to keep them five years. It's definitely worth looking at spending a thousand now. You do the math. I don't know how to count, right? But that's a very strong logic and you can apply it to a lot of things. So next time someone is saying, is saying do you have a, a sales funnel? Say, no, I don't have a sales funnel. I have much better than that. This is what you have to start thinking about. Yeah. And I, I will want to give a full example to keep going on, on that subject. Let's take, um, let's put a, um, yeah, a full use case uh, on that uh, explanation. Um, we gave gardening on the video before. Uh, there we talked about um, SaaS, we talked about product with cat. Let's give an example that will um, make them uh, see and uh, identify. Um, Let's give the consulting business. I think it's a good one um, because many people actually have uh, an agency or consulting business. So let's give the example on that one. If we think about a funnel, okay, we need to make acquisition to find customers. So we have an audience of, let's say, entrepreneurs. Those entrepreneurs definitely need to see us. We can create content organically, as we said. We can generate uh, content with ads that will generate interaction in a short time period, faster because we pay to get those person. They get to that step, they give uh, their email with a lead magnet, as we said, for example, and we give a lead magnet. It's not an ebook, but more a guide, a guideline about, okay, how you can get better at, uh, I don't know, we said coaching and agency, so how to get better at marketing, let's say, as marketing goes out. Uh, how to get better at that. Okay, you gave your email, you're in the funnel. Then you get nurtured, we give you value. So now I am the company, I am the agency, I am the consultant, I am the coach, whatever, and I bring value to that person in how he can make more money and how he can do a better marketing to succeed more in his activity. Okay, I do that, I nurture him, I bring value proposition, I bring um, expertise, I bring technical stuff for free, and then they will have be warmed and understood, they understood uh, what I can bring. But now it's not done. I will also, in all of that content I bring, put and push the points where he has struggles. And he knows he has those struggles. So he needs expertise to understand that I can do the job, but he also needs um, to have uh, the struggles in front of him to realize, ah, I really need to work on that one. Okay, so the behavior of that person tend to be, I need to solve that problem because he sees the struggle and he sees where he needs to, to walk, the pain, the triggers. Slowly but surely, that person is warm and he's hot. When he's hot, he has a selling page and on that selling page, of course, he will see what he can get and he will buy. Okay, first job done. The thing is about, let's say, um, a training in video, video training. This video training 
is not personalized fully. It's personalized to the niche, but it's not personalized to him. Now we think, okay, um, I paid 1000, for example, to get that. But now the company that is reaching out to me uh, is saying that if I want a more personalized way to see the improvement of my marketing, I can definitely make a call with that person. I saw the expertise, I understood the project, I paid for the 1000 and in addition of that, I saw the video are worth of my money. So I know that person can definitely bring me uh, value. So they say, okay, you can get into a club, this club you can get into by, I don't know, paying 100 uh, per month. So it's 1,200 per year and 100 per month, okay, I can get access to. Now he will have a call every two weeks, let's say, with that person, but it will be a group call. Okay, so I had no access to that person, that company. Now I have access to that person, but on group. So it's not fully personalized, but I have the idea that I know I need to have a personalized uh, approach to my problem because I want to solve it. Okay, now I get to a point that uh, one, two, three, group cohort call with a person and I do think I really need um, more help because I'm struggling still there, there and there. The fact is the LTV is interesting in a way that he pays a subscription but he wants more. So I will bring him a product as the company that is organizing all this um, uh, training about consultant and getting better marketing for consultant entrepreneurs and things like that and agency and everything. And now I will bring a third offer. So first offer to remind 1000, you get a video courses. Second offer, cohort uh, meetings with a club of people that are like me. 3000. So in total, uh, let's say we, if I say the 100 per, per, per month. So it's uh, 2200 if we have to be straight on numbers. But now they offer me uh, a consulting of 5K. So I pay 5K once and I have six months consulting. The fact is consulting will be maybe one call every week or one call every two weeks, whatever. But it will be a one one this time. So I will pay 5,000. In total, 7,200. So in this situation, we paid for an acquisition once for a person that cost us maybe for 1,000, he cost us, I don't know, 500 to get him. So we made profit at the first stage. We made profit on a continual, um, uh, on a monthly basis, uh, step by step, and it will run for any time he's in the group because we have his credit card. And in addition of that, when he think it's not enough and we are making him understand that it's uh, never enough, <laughs> he can always go further. We have a one one, but once we are on a one one, okay, you will have go into the whole process of our LTV. But now it's not finished. Let's say we've got the first step. Now we expanded the hourglass and we tend to be at a layer where we should and may think it's uh, the end. We cannot sell him anything. The fact is we helped him improve in the marketing for him as an agency, as a consultant or whatever. But what can we bring him more? Maybe understanding on, I don't know, how to uh, script something, how to uh, do VSLs, how to that funnel make it better because now we understand how to make marketing. So now let's help him to the hourglass itself. And then we have another offer how where we can do exactly, the business. how to scale the business, where we can do exactly the same, a video courses. And after the video courses, we can just bring a new membership for this person or maybe he's inside already, so it's okay, he won't have to come. Oh, okay, so he think he make uh, an economy on this one. And then he will want a one-one also on this time, on this special topic. So you see, there is no limit to the lifetime value we can bring if we see it as a continuously bringing value to that person and making him understand uh, he needs that. And the point is interesting because um, it works with everyone. It works if you're selling flowers, um, you sell rose, but with the rose you can sell a little card and you can sell a membership card so that next time the guy comes to get roses for the wife, he can get 10% off. 
And yes, you're going to lose 10% on each rose next time, but you're actually building the loyalty of the client, which means he's coming back. So you'll actually make money instead of losing the amount of the discount. You can do that with your bread, with your butcher, with your whatever online SaaS. Um, it's digital, it's for books, whatever it works. And the, uh, the concept was um, explained very clearly by the guy who was the, actually the founder of uh, ClickFunnels and he wrote a book that was called uh, Dot .com Secrets. So it's like maybe five, five, ten years old, something like that. Yes, yeah, something like that. And yeah. the book was really interesting because he was explaining the whole logic of that hourglass kind of system. And he was calling it the, the, the value ladder, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, we're going to put the, the picture yeah. but to explain it. But basically the idea is it's stairs. The same way you would go up in your house. Um, and the first stair is going to be something free. That you're going to get PDF ebook on the website. Free. But it's value. And it's called a value ladder because at every new step there is more value that's built. So the first one is the freebie. Okay. Clickbait. Second one is going to be a $99 course. Okay. Second one is exactly what you were mentioning. It's going to be group coaching. The one after that is going to be group coaching is not enough. So it's going to be personal coaching. And his point was to say at some point in that game, I'm going to charge a million, but for a million, I'll take a plane. I'll go to see the CEO of whatever company that hired me. I'll put the, the barbecue, I'll grill the sausages and I'll do the digital strategy of the CEO with the CEO around the barbecue. And that's going to be a million dollar sausage. <laughs> But the point is, it's exactly that. And you can't have that logic of um, ladder, value ladder, if you're just thinking in terms of funnel, it's not possible. So the, qu the question is, how do you build that? And the interesting thing about that book actually is that he's explaining it and he's saying, right now, that's what I'm doing. The entry point is that book. And right now you're, you're reading that book. You don't know me. You haven't seen me everywhere before. But you're reading that book and you paid $15 for it. The next step, and he writes it like that, the next step is you are going to go on ClickFunnels because you are going to be curious. And on ClickFunnels, you are going to buy the first membership because it's going to be the one that works for you and it's going to be enough. And you're going to make money with that. So to save money, you're going to buy the next membership that's going to give you discounts and blah, 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 blah. And progressively, you are going to go up my ladder. Maybe when we go back to the question of how many people um, turn into leads, not just prospects and clients and paying clients and returning clients, but he's saying, my funnel is this one, you are part of it, I'm explaining it to you. And we could do the same. We could say, okay, our own version is not a book, it's those videos. Mm -hmm. And you're learning the process and we're explaining that. And our job is to work with entrepreneurs on how do we scale a business? How do we make sure that this business is working a lot more without you and for you, right? So the next step is you're going to do it now. Go below, look at the description. And in the description, you're going to see two links. One, if you want to find a coach and it's going to send you to coach. And another one, if you want to do it on your own, you can find the online whatever that we have. And you can use that if you want. And that's going to be different levels of values that you're going to be able yeah. to find and if you, yeah. exactly and if you don't want to do it that's fine because it's education and it is value anyway for free or if the the channel is monetized then this is n for free because it doesn't cost you anything but to us it brings ads so it's still revenue and therefore it sounds free but it's actually part of the income model mm -hmm. so it, it is worth thinking about in terms of uh, chain of value and value ladder. Lifetime value of the client is there and the lifetime value of a client can start from a free video on YouTube. Exactly. And, and I will keep going because you said something interesting with the barbecue and some people will think, oh, I cannot make someone pay a million for a barbecue. No, but you can definitely gather the people for a mastermind and maybe you will make it cost 25,000. So if you have 10 people, it's already 250,000. And if you have 200 people, 
Okay, so uh, it's definitely something that is scalable on any kind of offer and the more uh, rarity you give at the beginning, the more opportunity you have in the long term of yourself and what you bring to that person. It's also a, a question of, um, so of course, funnel, sales uh, tunnel and sales pipeline, sales process, but that's just one flip of the coin. The mm -hmm. other one is what is the, the, the perceived value of it. Exactly. You can have a banknote that's worth $5 on one hand and another banknote that's worth $100. It's still a bloody piece of paper. The paper itself doesn't have value. One has value of $5 because everyone agrees that it's worth $5 and another one has a better va perceived value of 100 because we've all decided it's worth that, right? That's the same point. If you say for a million, I'll come and I'll put the barbecue on and blah, blah, blah. It's not about the one million dollar sausage. It's about the fact that the client is the CEO of a multinational company that has a lot of money and not a lot of time. So he doesn't want to spend weeks building a thing. And he wants, he doesn't want to move. He doesn't want to take a plane. He doesn't want to do the job in a complicated way but he wants you to come, spend your time, bring your own expertise, your own advice in his garden when he doesn't have to do anything and he wants to get damn good value on whatever audit you've done before and you're going to deliver in an easy way eating sausage. And the perceived value of that is huge because we have an international marketing expert who comes to us in our garden to deliver exceptional value on a Sunday afternoon. Mm, exactly. And therefore the value is very different. I Another think. example um, that you can find, I think it's in that book as well, is the example of the phone. When the guy goes onto a stage at a conference and speaks and he takes the phone out of his pocket and he says, this is a million dollar phone and someone is going to buy it. And everyone goes like, ha, 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 what, that, what did that guy smoke, right? And then he starts selling it and he says, so on that phone, you'll find my Dropbox. And on my Dropbox, there is $500,000 worth of training that I've invested into for all my teams over the past five years. Everything I've learned on marketing is in there. Does someone want to buy it? And then you have some people who start raising their hand because that phone is worth a lot more than just a phone. But I'm not done because that phone has all my contact details and those contact details will answer if there is a message from that phone, not from your phone. There is the CEO of Apple in there. There is the CEO of Nvidia. There is the CEO of any kind of big company you want. And you can reach them directly with my WhatsApp account if you get that phone. And then you see people who raise their hands in the public because they want to buy the phone. So the value is not the value of the phone. The value is the perceived value of the phone. And that's what really matters. So it depends not just on the funnel. It depends not just on the hourglass. It depends on the perceived value you create into that funnel that gets people into leads and then makes them sign again. And all that is linked. It starts from a funnel and you start building value, more value, more value. It turns into an hourglass, but more value. And the more you build value, the more valuable you become to the people, the more expensive you have and the more they're going to come to you, which means you become rarer because you don't have time for everyone. And therefore you're even more expensive and it becomes a loop. That's something you should understand. And it was really related to what we said with freelancers, if you remember. Uh, because it's on all stage of the progress and of the growth. Actually, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, rarity makes you get price higher because value you bring is way more higher than anything else. So, yes. Thank you, Antoine. The conclusion? Conclusion? <laughs> conclusion is think twice about how you're selling. I think the, the point is good um, to say that if someone says, do you have a sales funnel? You should be saying, you know, sales funnel are, are outdated. You need to think deeper, man. And I agree with you. And sometimes it's only a matter of copywriting because you can have exactly the right funnel, but just by changing the copywriting, you could do double 
and you could even triple your sales just because the perceived value, as you explained, there is much more understood. Yeah, and it's a question of mindset. If you have the right mindset from the beginning, you will adapt the copywriting, you will adapt the process of selling and, um, and that makes the difference. So, well. And it's also a skill. And if you don't have the skill of copywriting, it's okay, find people that have. Exactly, but you need to build the process in the first place and, and be clear about what you have. Yeah, exactly. that's all for me. See you in the next video. See you guys.